inspire the community to advance the welfare of animals and elevate their value in society. Safeguard, rescue, shelter, adopt out, and advocate for animals in need. Act as a lifeline to underserved regional shelters. Maintain our 100% uh, placement rate for adoptable animals. Reduce dog and cat overpopulation through spay and neuter and education. <clears throat> IMHS survives because of the community, the members, and the volunteers. Um, I'd like to invite Marvin Anderson up to the stage, up to the podium, the front. <laughs> um, uh, Marta joined the shelter, for who of those who don't know Marta, Marta joined the shelter in November of 2011, and she really hit the ground running. Uh, Marta has about 17 years experience in humane education and the humane movement, and she relocated to Colorado from Cleveland to help people with the shelter. So Marta, do you want to come? Yeah. but thank you. <laughs> um, thanks again to everybody for coming out tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, when we were, we had a meeting, a little powwow last week, we were putting together all the information, looking over the accomplishments of the last year, and it was just impossible to let this annual report go by without a few words of recognition to the volunteers, um, many of who are here tonight, and I'm just delighted because I see, I think, Every volunteer opportunity that we have is represented here tonight. Thrift store, transport, outreach, youth volunteers, and which are largely enrichment volunteers in the shelter. And it's absolutely impossible for us to um, thank you in just a couple of minutes for all that you do, but we're going to try. <laughs> um, one thing that I found really remarkable when I joined Intermount Humane Society last November was that unlike other agencies that I've been in, the things that need to be done in the shelter, just on a daily basis to open the shelter, the, the essential animal care duties, feeding the animals, providing clean space for them, exercising them, the number of people who were performing this really essential work were largely volunteers and outnumbered, in the case of our agency, outnumbers the paid staff that are there doing this. So I just can't thank you enough for your dedication and your compassion and your support. It really has overwhelmed me and it inspires me every day. Um, I wanted to say a special note too about our thrift shop volunteers. Um, I have worked with several agencies in the past that had a program of this kind to try to help support operations. And I have never seen an operation as successful as what we have. Our thrift shop supports about one quarter of our entire operational budget in the shelter. And it takes not just dedication and compassion to really successfully pull this off. It takes a real talent for merchandising and a real skill for the people who are running that shop. They keep it open seven days a week. There are about a dozen of them, six, sorry, six days a week. There's a dozen of you who are running the place, and I don't know if you know how special you are. What you do is, is really gold, and you are among the best in your field of what you're doing. Um, and one of the most successful thrift store operations that I have ever seen. And we're so grateful to you, and we can, we can never say it enough. And this is for, for all of you that are um, lending your support and, and your generosity of time to the shelter. We can never say it enough, but it makes a tremendous difference. We see it in the lives of the animals every day. You really are everyday heroes, and thank you for what you do. As uh, Martin mentioned, you can never say thank you enough to our friends and contributors, but um, perhaps the animals and the animals served can, can speak a little bit. Uh, in 2011, uh, IMHS took in 500 animals. 277 animals were spayed and neutered. 
465 animals were adopted. 20 animals were returned to grateful owners. Uh, that's an amazing 94.4% life reduce rate. So congratulations to the staff on that. All right, the financial report. Uh, for 2011, um, IMHS had a net loss of $1,604. Uh, the good news is 2012 is uh, showing a record profit, uh, and we had our best March ever uh, on record. Uh, the 990s were filed last week, and uh, for anyone who wants more detail about the financials, they are available in the shelter, or you can visit the Secretary of State website. Last year, over 30,000 homeless uh, cats and dogs were put to death in Colorado. Uh, in 2011, IMHS stepped up our commitment to reducing euthanasia rates statewide. Our first priority, excuse me, <coughs> is uh, helping uh, owner surrenders and strays in our local community. When space is available, we reach out to shelters across the area and sometimes in other states. In 2011, IMHS partnered with 90 agencies to transfer 334 animals in need. Additionally, we renewed our partnership with Park County Animal Control. IMHS continues to work with off-site adoption locations and through the hard work of our staff, um, we now partner with three Denver Area Pet Smart locations and two Denver Area Pet Co locations. These partnerships resulted in 25 dog and 172 cat adoptions in 2011. Here are several highlights um, from 2011 of IMHS accomplishments. Uh, new leadership and staff, uh, everybody met Marta Anderson. Uh, Karen Lang um, was uh, a volunteer with us since about 2001. <coughs> Uh, in 2011, she was working weekly in the office um, doing administrative work, and she was in the right place at the right time, and uh, joined us to become our shelter manager. Karen, can you just raise your hand? Uh, we were also fortunate to have Bernard Clanton um, join us as a kennel technician. For anybody who hasn't met Bernard yet, Bernard, can you just raise your hand real quick? Um, as we mentioned, we had a really <coughs> focus with Park County Animal Control and other area shelters to support the animals in the community. The shelter is now open seven days a week, 11 to 4, with expanded hours on Wednesdays to 7 p.m. Um, these new hours resulted in an immediate increase in our adoption rates. The IMHS clinic was funded in 2011 and celebrated its grand opening in February of 2012. Uh, to date, the volunteer vet staff has performed uh, approximately 50 surgeries, and uh, that's resulted in about $3,700 in savings. IMHS has partnered with several local charities to provide food and supplies to families who are adversely affected uh, in the tough economy. Uh, Martin and Karen have initiated conversations <coughs> with several other agencies to examine how to increase return to owner rates, prevent births, and help uh, more young animals. New software has been implemented to track adoptions, intakes, and income. The new software helps us to analyze uh, monthly and annual trends as well as increases our operational controls and efficiencies. reduce the staff costs and um, uh, elevate the level of care to animals, a large val uh, volunteer drive was launched. This has resulted in nearly 40 new volunteers. This is a stunning 111% increase in active volunteers. Directly related to the increase in volunteers, um, e each animal now receives one-on-one uh, -on -one attention and increased socialization time. Dogs are assigned to play groups and get romp time in the large playpen. 
and cats get free roaming time in the shelter adoption lobby each day. Uh, the board implemented several new policies and updated several existing policy policies to bring IMHS up into compliance with the Colorado Nonprofit Corporation Act. <clears throat> Some of our fundraising highlights. The all-star team of volunteers at the Second Tra Chance Thrift Store brought in over $33,000 in pure profit. That's a twelve. <laughs> That's a 12.5% increase over 2010. The silent auction raised uh, over $7,000. Uh, the highlight of the uh, silent auction was the raffle uh, with one lucky winner walking away the owner of a beautifully handcrafted quilt. And uh, although she's not here, I'd like to thank Sharon Sharp for that donation. Additionally, uh, IMHS held its first casino night and uh, were the fortunate benefactors of several area businesses, uh, including the Sit Bull Saloon, Anytime Fitness, and Aspen Peak Sellers, uh, who made us their charities for a day. And I'd, I'd like to thank you. We have experienced tremendous growth in our volunteer base. We are always looking for additional. Um, here are a few of the many opportunities available. Um, if, if you are interested or know anyone who might be interested, you can visit our website at uh, imhs.org or stop in and visit with Marta or Karen. Uh, before I take any <coughs> questions, I would like to thank all the board members, uh, staff, volunteers, and the entire community who supported us in 2011. Thank you. All right, and I will now open it up if anyone has any questions. I just want to make it easy on you tonight. No questions? All right. Yes? Is the, um, have a few more months under our belt, um, we will evaluate perhaps doing a low-cost um, clinic or something like that. Um, we've done some research. There's a lot of insurance issues involved with that um, and some other things. So I, I would not say it's likely in the near future, but we'll you know, keep it in the back of our minds. Yes? Are we going to talk about the amendment? The, uh the bylaws change? Bylaws change? Yeah, absolutely. We are. That's next on the list. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Good segue. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, everyone who was a member should receive in the mail um, some notes about some bylaws changes that we want to make. Um, we do need to make these as a part of. Um, the membership meeting, it's, it's required by our bylaws to make changes to the bylaws of the membership meeting. Um, the board sat down, and by the way, the majority of these are grammatical changes, things like that. We're going to go through them. Um, what I'm going to do, uh, it's a little bit different than, than uh, a lot of meetings you might see, which are, which are based on um, Robert's Rules of Order and how things are going to go. What I'm going to do is read through these. The board has already discussed them. I'll read through the original text, the new text, and we'll explain why we're requesting the change. And then we're going to ask for a motion in a second. Um, once that's done, we'll open it up for discussion. If anyone has comments, you'll be yielded to the floor for up to two minutes. Um, I ask if you have questions, just you know, raise your hand, I'll call on you. Um, once the comment air, um, section is done, then we'll raise for a vote. Um, when I ask for a vote, um, I'll ask for all the yeas. Raise your hand for a yay. Uh, I'll ask for all the names, raise your hand for a nay if you, if you don't want to vote for it. If there's a clear majority, we'll move on. If it's not so clear, we'll ask for a recount. Uh, the A's will raise their hand, we'll do a count. The nays will raise their hand, we'll do a count. Everybody understand? All right. So, for the first change, 
Um, oh, by the way, there's a couple of um, bylaws scattered around, I think, is that right? So there's a couple of things that he wants to review over if he has some more questions. Um, the first one, uh, the current language reads, uh, and this is Article 1, the first sentence, the purposes of this society are, uh, the proposed language is, the purposes of Intermount Humane Society hereafter referred to society are, and the reason is just consistency of terminology to follow through. Second. Right. Um, it's been moved and seconded to make this proposed change. I now open it up for comment. All right. If there's no comment, um, all in favor of the proposed change, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. That one's passed. See how easy this is? <laughs> all right. All right. Final change number two. The current language reads, and Terry can read along with me if they'd like. Um, silently. Uh, <laughs> at each regular meeting of the Board of Directors, the Directors may expel any member for reasonable cause. Expulsion from the Society may be for actions contradictory to the purposes or policy stated in Article 1 or other acts which are construed to be detrimental to the Society, its members, or reputation. Any person expelled may appeal such a decision to the President of the Board of Directors by addressing a Notice of Appeal to the Secretary. The members may, at a special meeting, call in accordance with Article 5, Section 2, by a majority vote, overrule any exposure. Their decision shall be final. The proposed language, at each regular meeting of the Board of Directors, the Directors may expel any member for reasonable cause. Expulsion from the Society may be for actions contradictory to the purposes or policy stated in Article 1, or other actions which are construed to be detrimental to the Society's its membership or reputation. The individual being considered for expulsion must be notified at least 30 days prior to the board vote by certified mail and allowed to be heard at least five days prior to the effective date of the proposed expulsion. Any person expelled may appeal such decision to the president of the board of directors by addressing a notice of appeal to the secretary. The members may, at a special meeting, call in accordance with Article 5, Section 2 by a majority vote overrule any expulsion. Their decision shall be final. The reason, uh, clarity of reference to membership versus members as a whole versus reference to an individual member, and addition of the third sentence, which is for compliance with the Colorado Nonprofit Act, Corporation Act, uh, Article 7-126-2, two paragraphs 4 and 2. All right, it's been moved in. Uh, second, to uh, uh, make this change to the bylaws. Is there any comment? As there's no comment, uh, we'll call for vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? All right, the majority vote is approved. I'm sorry, this is a little bit long winded, but bear with me here. Um, <coughs> bylaws, proposed change number three, um, Article 4, Section 5, uh, does not exist at this point in time. The proposal is. Any amendment to the Articles of Incorporation or Bylaws of the Society that would terminate all members or any class of members or cancel all memberships or any class of memberships shall require the voluntary relinquishment of membership from all paid members. Membership rights must be relinquished in writing and the members' signatures must be notarized. The reason for doing this is the Colorado Nonprofit Corporation Act 7-130-302, paragraph 1. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to uh, uh, approve bylaws proposed change number three. Is there any comment? As there's no comment, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the majority vote. Uh, proposed change number three is passed. Proposed change number four. The current language reads, advance notice of all meetings of members shall be given the members, members by the secretary or in his or her absence by another officer. All such notices should be at least 10 days in advance of the date set for the meeting. The proposed change. Advance written notice of all meetings of members shall be given to the members by first class or certified mail by the secretary or in her, his or her absence by another officer. All such notices will be mailed no less than 30 days in advance of the date set for the meeting. Notice will be given by phone and or email to members whose notices are returned undeliverable. A 30-day advance notice will also be communicated by a newspaper of general circulation in the service area of the society. 
Uh, the reason for uh, making this bylaws change is to incorporate and in this case exceed requirements of notice as defined in the Colorado Nonprofit Corporation Act. Okay. It's been moved and seconded for proposed change number four to take effect. Uh, is there any comment? A question. This refers to um, any routine meetings of the membership. This, yes, routine meetings of the membership, correct. And this is not not the monthly board meetings, which are limited. This, this would be this meeting in May of you know, 2013 going forward or any special meetings. Any other comments? All right, seeing as there's no further comment, we will move to vote. All in favor of bylaws proposed change number four? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? All right. For the majority, we have a group bylaws proposed change number four. <coughs> bylaws proposed change number five. <coughs> the current language reads, the concerns, directions, policies, and management of the affairs of this society shall be vested in the board of directors whose number is established at nine, but no act of this society shall be void at any time because there be less than nine. Uh, nine, I'm sorry, nine because there's less than nine directors in office while the board is not attempts to reestablish its number. The proposed language, the concerns, directions, policies, and management of the affairs of the society shall be best in the board of director whose number is established at nine. But no act of this society shall be void at any time because there are less than nine directors in office while the board attempts to reestablish its numbers. This is a grammatical correction. Um, it means the word be less versus are less. All right, it's been moved and seconded to accept uh, bylaws proposed change number five. Is there any comment? Seeing as there's no comment, we'll move to vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, by majority vote, proposed change number five is approved. Bear with me, folks, just a couple more. Um, proposed change number six, the current language reads. At each annual meeting, the members present shall elect qualified directors as needed so that half, or in the case of there being an odd number of directors, nearly half, of the directors will have terms expiring in one year, and the others have terms expiring in two years. There shall be no limit to the number of terms the director may serve. The new directors shall assume their duties at the board meeting following the annual meeting. The proposed language. At each annual meeting, the members present shall elect directors to serve in director seats that are expiring at that meeting. Director nominees are required to be 18 years of age or older and a resident of the state of Colorado. Each director is elected to serve the two-year term determined by the seat number to which he or she is elected. In odd number of years, all odd number of seats will expire, and in even number of years, all even number of seats will expire, resulting in half or nearly half of all seats, of all seats Typo. Expiring at each annual membership meeting. Uh, the reason for the change, uh, defining the minimum qualification of directors and clarifying the staggered terms of directors, um, and that's based on the Colorado Nonprofit Corporation Act. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve proposed change number six. Is there any comment? Uh, I saw Elaine's hand first, Elaine. Why are we taking out qualified? They can be anybody, they can't be qualified directors? Um, the current language says qualified directors, yet the proposed said elect directors. Yes. Not qualified. Well, um, what would the qualification? There's no qualification set forth by the Colorado Nonprofit Act for serving other than being 18 years old and a resident of the state of Colorado. Okay. I just had a question about term limits or lack thereof. There's no mention in the new one. Is there going to be, um, is that showing up somewhere else, or are there no term limits? Um, there are no, there can, will continue to be no term limits for the number of terms that a director can serve. But that sentence was just okay from the first, from the current language? In two years. Current language. Just serves two years for terms. I understand, I, yeah, I understand the previous one of terms. Talking, there's no limit to the number of terms a director may serve. Um, I guess that would be super, superfluous. It's it's it would be uh, in essence stating 
um, stating something that doesn't need to be said because it exists already would, would be my answer to that. There are term limits for officers, though, right? There are term limits for office. Well, yes, the, the uh, position of president cannot serve for more than two consecutive years. But that's separate. That is not part of the directors. I didn't have a question. She asked essentially my question. Okay. Um, all right. Well, what happens here? Um, there, there is a question on the table. Um, what we'll do is we'll call for vote. If it approves, it'll go through the way it is. If it doesn't, then we'll come back at a later time and make changes so everybody understands the process. I second. All right. It's been moved and seconded <laughs> to accept the uh, bylaws proposed change number six. Is there any more comment? All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, it's passed. Opposed change number six. We should put that in our notes for next year, though. <laughs> it's a it's a very good point. We, we probably should clarify that. All right. Um, bylaws proposed change number seven. The current language reads: The outgoing board shall remain in office until the board meeting following the annual meeting, at which time the new board shall be installed. The proposed language. The outgoing board director's terms end immediately after the annual meeting election process is complete. The newly elected board director's positions will become effective at that time. Outgoing directors will, within seven days of the transition period, deliver to new directors all information pertinent to their positions. Outgoing directors will make every effort to provide newly elected directors with information and direction necessary to complete a seamless transfer during the transition period. The reason for the change to clarify the time at which it terms and ends and promote continuity of required duties. It's been moved and seconded to accept the proposed bylaws change number seven. Is there any comment? Seeing as there's no comment, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Bylaws change number seven. Number eight, the current language reads, election of officers by the board shall be held not more than one month after each annual meeting, at which time the new board shall be installed. The proposed change, <coughs> election of interim officers by the board shall be held immediately after the election process of each annual meeting so that the society will always have its required officers of president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. The election of permanent officers to serve a one-year term will be held within one week of each annual meeting. Uh, the reason for this is to clarify the time at which the election officers must occur. I said. It's been moved and seconded to accept bylaws proposed change number eight. Is there any comment? Seeing as there's no comment, we'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, proposed bylaws number Bylaws proposed change number eight is passed. Oops. But oh, we have a numbering problem. Mm -hmm. This is not. All right. This is bylaws proposed change number nine. Uh, the current language: directors, as such, and all person working on behalf of the society. society shall be classed as volunteers and shall not receive any salaries or fees for their services, but may be reimbursed for any reasonable expenses incurred in fulfilling their duties. The proposed language, board directors shall be classed as volunteers and shall not receive any salaries or fees for their services, but may be reimbursed for any reasonable expenses incurred while fulfilling their duties. Uh, and that's to clarify the reference to board directors. Uh, it was effectively implying we couldn't pay staff previously. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve bylaws proposed change number nine. Is there any comment? Can I ask a silly question? Yes. Why is it just board directors? Why not? What happened to the word of? Um, <laughs> this is all part of the clarification, directors? and we're actually going to see in the in, at the end of all of this. We're actually going to see a, a change that's going to move everything from board of directors, board directors and all of these different usages to just the word directors. That comes at the end, which is a sweeping oh, correction okay. of the okay. entire document. I know it's a silly question. Yeah, it's yeah there's just some grammatical <laughs> things in there, so we're trying to clean that stuff up. Any other comment? 
Seeing as there's no additional comment, um, we'll call the vote. Bylaws proposed change number nine. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, bylaws proposed change number nine has passed. Number 10, um, <clears throat> current language, action shall be deemed to have been so taken by the board at the time the last director signs a writing describing the action taken. Proposed language, action shall be deemed to have been so taken by the board at the time the last director signs a writing describing the action taken. This is for manual correction. Uh, is there any comment? It's been moved and seconded to um, Approved bylaws proposed change number 10. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> all right, bylaws proposed change number 10 is approved. Number 11. <coughs> uh, regular meeting of the board shall be held at such times and places as shall be fixed by the board, provided that the board shall meet at least quarterly for the transaction of business. The annual meeting of the board shall be held within 30 days of the annual meeting of the members. The proposed language. Regular meeting of the board shall be held at such times and places as shall be fixed by the board, provided that the board shall meet at least quarterly for the transaction of business. The annual meeting of the board shall be held within seven days following the annual meeting of the members. The reason for this consistency of time allowed for annual meeting of the board and election of officers. It's been moved and seconded to approve bylaws proposed change number 11. Is there any comment? It's been, um, well, since there's no comment, we'll call to vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, with a majority vote, bylaws proposed change number 11 has passed. Bylaws proposed change number 12, the current limited language. At the organizing meeting following each annual meeting or at any meeting of the board called for the purpose of election of officers, the board shall elect from among the directors a president, vice president, <coughs> a secretary, a treasurer, <coughs> and such other officers as business of the society may require. The proposed language. At the annual meeting of the board, the board shall elect from among the directors a president, vice president, a secretary, a treasurer, and such other officers as business of the society may require. Um, and this reason for this change consistent C of language used to refer to the annual meeting of the board. It's been moved and seconded to accept proposed change number 12. <coughs> is there any comment? <coughs> Seeing as there's no comment, uh, we'll move to vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? By majority of vote, bylaws proposed change number 12 has passed. Uh, bylaws proposed change number 13, the current language does not exist. This is a new um, <coughs> section. The proposed language. Any and all changes to the society's euthanasia policy must be approved by a majority vote of the membership at either an annual membership meeting or a special meeting called by the president. Uh, president. Written notice stating that proposed changes must be given to all members pursuant to Article 5, Sections 2 and 3. Uh, the reason for this, the euthanasia policy currently in use was approved in August of 2011. This will be putting the euthanasia policy into the bylaws. It's been moved and seconded to approve bylaws proposed change number 13. Is there any comment? I have a comment. What is the current euthanasia policy? Um, is is we it do, written in the annual report? It is not in the annual report. It was mailed to members, and um, I believe we have a couple of copies. It's, it's fairly lengthy, um, goes into quite a bit of detail about following the similar accords, um, using those as far as um, to, to determine when an animal can be considered. Any other comment? Okay, um, seeing as there's no other comment, we'll call to vote. All in favor of bylaws proposed change number 13? Aye. Aye. Opposed? By majority vote, bylaws proposed change number 13 is passed. Ah, number 14. The board shall have the authority and power to hire an executive director to carry out the necessary work and purposes of the society. Uh, the proposed language is to remove this um, article. The reason is to better reflect the core staffing structure of the society. Uh, 
second. It's been moved and seconded to approve bylaws proposed change number 14. Is there any comment? Seeing as there's no comment, we'll call to vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, bylaws proposed change number 14 is passed. Okay, last one, folks. Um, bylaws proposed change um, overall. Um, so this is going through the entire document and making grammatical and uh, clarification changes. Um, so the following minor changes are proposed to be applied to the entire document to provide consistency and grammatical accuracy. Uh, board of Directors will re be referred to as Board. Intermountain Humane Society, the Society, and the Society will be referred to as Society. Periods will be placed at the end of all sentences. <laughs> The page number will be placed at the bottom of each page. At the a footer at the bottom of each page will be IMHS Board of DOD Board of Director Bylaws um, with the date of May 2012. The numbering and lettering of articles and sections will be appropriately edited to reflect all additions and removals approved by the membership at the 2012 meeting, which is tonight's meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the bylaws proposed change overall. Is there any comments on I thought we were getting rid of board of directors and just saying board. Why, it, why this is what this is what it's saying. It's saying we will replace board of directors with the word board through the entire document. Okay, but down there you have BOD. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the footer. So that's not part of the bylaws. Okay. That's just okay. a clarification from right. the document. The, that's just to help you be able to know what page you're on. So, okay. Is there any other comment? Being from West Virginia, I'm annoyed by periods of being involved. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear that. We can just say it. I'm just saying it. <laughs> all right. Seeing as there's no other comment, we'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. By majority vote, the proposed bylaw changes overall is approved. Yes, that is all, folks. It's wrap time. Yay! Uh, Woo! Uh, we have to wait 15 oh, we have to wait 15 minutes? Okay. Sorry, we're running a little ahead of the schedule. Um, so, uh, we're going to have the raffle at 7.30. There's lots of great stuff to eat. There's some coffee and drinks. If anybody wants to take a quick bio break, um, mill around. If anyone has questions, feel free to come up and talk to any of the board or the staff. Or buy more wraps. Or buy more wraps. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so we'll and don't forget we recycle cans for the animals. Yeah, we do. We provide canned beverages for reasons. Right? <laughs> so leave the cans with us or drop them by the shelf. Yeah. 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 You're looking lucky yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Just real quick before the election, um, it was a very good suggestion. Someone asked if I would introduce all of the board uh, directors, and I'd be happy to do so. So we'll start right on the end. Is uh, and everybody just raise your hand. Uh, this is Kathy O'Brien. Uh, Kathy's a certified veterinary technician, so she's on our ops team and is one of the people who's helping run the surgery clinic. In addition, she's also our secretary. Uh, next is Dave O'Brien. Uh, Dave is a veterinarian, so he's also involved with our IMHS clinic and performing surgeries. Next to him is Matt Blumenshine. Matt is um, our vice president, and he's our grant writer, so he does a lot of paperwork to get us some extra money. Um, next, we have Sharon Thompson. Sharon's, I believe, our newest member of the board. Um, Sharon's been with us for two months now? Two months. And um, Sharon's starting to get involved in a lot of the fundraising activities. And she's also one of the people who's regularly in the shelter helping to take care of all the animals. Over in the back corner, we have Cheryl. Um, Cheryl is on the fundraising. She takes care of a lot of the IT stuff. She put together our presentation tonight, um, a lot of other things. And Cheryl's been with us. Since and the last summer. And it was like, uh, like August or something like that. Um, Cheryl, I guess. Yeah. Um, next is uh, Wendy. Wendy's our treasurer. And lastly, they're not paying attention to us, is Deb. 
<laughs> hurry up, hurry up. We're going to wrap up. You're the last um, one. Steve. Deb, Deb Hayes is uh, another one of our Blue members. She's been with us um, since about the beginning of the year. Um, she's handling all of our raffles. She's the chair of our fundraising committee. And that is a perfect segue for me to hand it over to Deb for our raffle. You ready, Deb? Or do you know? I need to make one more minute to the center of the Matt and Sharon. So did everybody enjoy the wonderful treats? Yeah. I know some people. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody want to grill harder about anything? Martin, did we get 13 animals in today? We got 13 animals in today. Did they, were, were they all from outside the We got in six animals from Art Valley Humane Society. Art Valley Humane Society is part of this. Yes, and they, and they called us with a desperate plea to transfer cats because they were uh, incredibly overcrowded. So we opened up all of our available cage space to them. And they threw in a basset hound for good luck. Um, <laughs> a really nice five-year-old basset hound. So if anyone's on the We also took in uh, lots of stray dogs today. But, and in every case but one, they all got returned to their owners by the end of the day. I think maybe the store from last night excited a lot of animals. They got loose. It's interesting, is, uh, although we've never actually tracked it, our estimate is that during thunderstorms and after large snowfalls is when we get the most stray animals. The thunderstorms, of course, scare off some of the animals and they're like the snowstorms because they can go over the fences. Are you doing that ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> that pays everyone. Okay. Hi, guys. This beats the, uh, the voting, doesn't it? Um, okay, thank you everybody. I think almost everybody in this room bought tickets, so that's great. We had a lot of success. This is the first time I think we've done a raffle. You may know differently historically, but a raffle at the end of the evening. Um, and I did want to mention that I mean, we looked around for a good deal so that we could really save as much profit for the animals and the shelter as possible. Um, and we did have on Monday a big thanks to the liquors who contributed some of the bottles of wine. So I was happy for that too. Um, it looks like we're going to clear a right around 22, somewhere north of $2,200. That's after, that's the profit after the uh, the prizes. Yeah. So thank you all of you. We had some great sales people out there too. We had people that went to King Supers, and I heard that nobody walked through those doors that didn't know it lay. <laughs> so we had a lot of success at that. I think we learned a lot of things uh, this time around, and I think. You know, next year or the next time we do it, I think it needs to be even better. If anybody has ideas, we're always willing to listen and want to hear your ideas. You know, the hardest part was arranging with prizes. So if you have ideas on what is mass appeal, uh, let us know. It will be interesting. It was funny just trying to pick these out, how difference of opinion between you know, three people even. So that was quite interesting. Um, and what we're going to do is have somebody come up and, you know, just, you know, Make sure you're reaching in, move them around a little bit. Uh, take one ticket, make sure before you pull it out, there's only one ticket in your hand. They are a little slippery, as you know, so just please make sure you've got one. Be a little careful not to have the contents falling out of the basket, if you will, so that we can you know, make this just as fair and uh, impartial as possible. <coughs> I'm going to turn it over and let Cheryl just explain a little bit about what we're doing, too. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Cheryl Ide. I'm actually the licensed gaming manager for IMHS. So the state of Colorado offers um, licensing so that we can hold raffles legally. And we did all our paperwork and everything, so we just wanted to give you guys a heads up. One of the reasons that you had to fill out so, so much information on the tickets this time around was because of the value of the prizes. So we're giving away prizes worth more than $1,000, which requires a lot more reporting to go back to the state. So we needed to make sure we, we kept really good track of all of the records. And, and again, like Deb said, that it was it was a fair process. With that said, I'd like to ask Lily to come up. Yeah. To Lily! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. We're going to be drawing four. We're going to go in, in uh, reverse order. So this is for the $100 Chris bill. Just draw it. Just put your hand in and reach around and make sure you 
Why oh so this is, for the <laughs> this is for the one hundred dollar bill. I know I'm old. <laughs> David and Harris. the $150 worth of King Super's gift cards. The next one we're drawing. This what? One. This, this one. He's drawing the prize number four. Congratulations. She okay. just said she wants nothing. 
she goes, I'm not getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the fireman said. The box of tickets as soon as we got here today. Oh, okay, oh, very good. Oh, That's good. good. Thank you, everybody. Oh, oh my God. God. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay, so we have one more step of the membership meeting, which is the elections. And then after that, the winners who are present can pick up their prizes or arrange delivery, maybe in some cases. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, we introduced all the board members. Um, what we're going to do is um, see if there's any um, uh, nominations for. Um, Directors from the floor. So, is there any nominations for director positions from the floor? Okay. Um, everyone should have received their ballot when they signed in. Um, there's instructions on the front of it if you want to take a moment to read your instructions. Essentially, what you're going to be doing is voting for um, four seats. Um, the four directors who are whose terms are up or whose seats are up. Um, this election cycle are already listed on the page. Um, you're going to put a yes or a check mark next to the four names that you want to vote for. Um, when you're done, you should have a, an envelope. Um, go ahead and seal your ballot in the envelope. And you're going to deliver it to Dave. Dave, you want to raise your hand again? Um, Dave and then um, Natalie is going to be stepping up to count ballots and then go through the counting of the ballots real quick. And then that would be the end of the members. Does anyone have questions? All right, I'll give you all just a couple of minutes and we'll check in in a minute and see how everything's doing. Okay. Uh, welcome to the May 2012 um, Interround Human Society Board of Directors meeting. Um, we'll start the meeting at 8.02 p.m. IMHS serves animals and people by offering programs that promote animal health and responsible pet stewardship and foster compassion towards animals. <coughs> um, first order of business, um, the, the meeting minutes were um, voted on and approved over the course of the previous month by the board. Um, second order of business is the business update. Um, we're so busy hearing, getting ready for this meeting, for the members meeting, we only had one vote um, or one vote go through, and that was Bernard has been working full time, effectively all year. Uh, we had Bernard at part time as far as benefits, vacation, and um, uh, sick leave, paid time. Pay, uh, paid time off, and so we've moved him to full time, which is went from four fifths to actual. Um, so, Marta, can you just notify Bernard that, that he's working full time on ours and now slow through? Oh. <laughs> I've already okay. done that. <laughs> okay. Got it. Um, uh, the next order of business is the shelter directory report. So, Marta. All right. So, um, the spring appeal is still in progress. Um, it might look like mail slowing down from the spring appeal. I haven't worked on it in the last two weeks. There have been no new letters that have gone out. So we still sent out just over 400 letters. Um, this campaign is going really strong, and we're going to keep doing it through the summer. Um, so far, we've collected $2,005 in gifts from the January appeal. There's still gifts trickling in from the holiday appeal and the January appeal, um, but we've gotten $5,630 in gifts from the January appeal. Um, three new businesses joined in the Members Rewards Program. Next Yappy Hour is scheduled for June 9th. I'm thinking that I want this one to, um, to include some of our youth volunteers and their families so that we can help engage their families a little bit better in what we do too. Um, spring newsletter went out in the mail today to Pardon. most recent adopters and members. Pardon. You've got two different dates on there. The June 6th and June 9th? It's June 6th. 6th it's, Wednesday? No, okay. it's on, yeah, whatever the Wednesday is. Okay, that's June 6th. That would be June 6th. Okay. okay. Um, new idea that I came up with. Um, I would like to declare, um, and I picked June arbitrarily for this, but I would like to do a membership month appeal 
and this is something that we'll send out um, as an email appeal, appeal to volunteers to raise awareness about membership. I think a lot of us have encountered volunteers who didn't know that we're a membership organization. Um, and I'd also like to post this on local websites and on our websites. Um, the draft that I had sent to Steve to approve um, actually issues this as a help us raise a certain number of dollars by June 30th in the membership drive. And I like the idea of having a goal where we try to raise a certain amount of membership money. Um, and um, I would like to start this, I would like to do this for June and run it through June 30th, perhaps extend it to July if we need to. And um, if anybody has a suggestion for doing a membership month and having it be a month other than June, let me know. But it's something that I'd like to start in the immediate sense. And I thought June would be a great time to do it. What time is the kitten, or when is the, would you finish the kitten appeal? I'm going to keep going through summer on that. This would overlap with the direct mail campaign, and this wouldn't be a direct mail piece. This would be an email blast to volunteers, and it would be something that we advertise on 285 Bound, Pine Cam, okay. and on our website. So it would overlap with that, and, I don't, and it wouldn't conflict with that in any way. Okay. And this is to raise awareness about membership and also to recruit more members to the organization. Um, we participated in the National Pet Adoption event at the first in Wadsworth location at PetSmart. Essentially, all three of the dogs that we took to this event ended up getting adopted out from the event, although one adoption took place three days after the event from an adopter that met the dog at the event. We're doing outreach tabling at the Mountain Area Home and Garden Show in Evergreen this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Making arrangements to paint the kennel floor within the next three weeks, and Bernard's working on a list of supplies that we'll need for that. We're going to coordinate community service help to um, get that done. And we are creating a new volunteer position for a clinic assistant that I will need input from the operations team on. Those are the highlights. Does anybody have any questions? Is part of the or is epoxy paint? Are you so. asking me about I the kind of paint you're using? I think they are. Okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering, you know, that special kind of paint. It's the same paint that we used before. We have it left over. Okay. We'll probably need to buy two more <laughs> gallons of it. But Bernard already did an inventory of the paint, and we have a lot of it left. It's like a heavy-duty porch paint is what it is that was used before. The kennel floor where the dogs are kept in particular looks really bad. And um, I'm concerned about our ability to properly sanitize the floor with the concrete spots that are showing through. How long so that's that take the priority? Um, to dry as far as ventilation and animals can handle. Um, he's going to put together a project timeline for this. And it may be that we arrange for, a, we want to do it on a day where we're relatively low on dogs perhaps have dogs taken home overnight if we need to. Um, I don't know if we want to do it in one day or two days where the wiring down of the spots happens in one day and then we arrange to start painting and have the dogs outside by 6 a.m. the next morning and leave them out until the evening or even have them go home overnight so that the whole room can be ventilated for at least you know, 12 hours. Um, you know, Park County has offered <coughs> their space. That's a, that's a great option, too. Contact them if they're not. A really good option, actually. So we can overnight them at Park County if they need to. My only concern about planning to leave them out all day is thunderstorms. So we, we would be doing this based on forecast, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, the last time we painted, it was more than 12 hours. And the shelter was empty for a week. But that we intentionally the took the dogs out of the shelter for a week. Mm -hmm. Well, the shelter was basically closed. Oh, okay. Well, I don't <laughs> want to close the shelter, but. Um, um, but we can make arrangements for dogs to be overnighted okay. elsewhere for as many days as we need to to make it safe for them. All right. 
and you'll keep us up to date on whatever oh, of course. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I think this is the optimal yeah. time to do it. Oh. Late spring. Has a I think when it was painted last time, I think the paint was donated. Yes, it was. And it was the person who has the paint place in a, in Aspen Park. Yeah, Aspen Park painting. Which isn't Aspen Park paint anymore. Is it a different owner? I don't think yeah, so. Because he's donated actually for several paintings. The one that's yeah. by the, the dance place. Yeah, by the Pablo place. Marketplace? Yeah, that's yeah. still Aspen Park paint? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I thought they changed. No, there's no eventually be more paint that's over next to the King Supers or close to the King Supers, but I think it's still the same. Okay. Does anyone have uh, any other questions for Marta? Thank you, Marta. Uh, next on the agenda is the shelter manager report. So, Karen, you're up. So, you all have a copy of the in out summary for the month of April. And, uh, we took in 81 animals. Kitten season is opposed to running 35, transferred in 35 cats. That's mostly. Um, from Denver in his plan will shelter. Took in 81 animals, adopted out, well, adopted out 30. The nice one, three went to foster, two were reclaimed, and three were transferred out. Don't remember who those were, so hold on a second. to free them service dogs mm -hmm. came and evaluated them and took them. They only take 30 dogs a year from animal shelters and they took two from us. Wow. And Elliot went to Jefferson County Animal Control. So these are dogs that become service dogs? Yeah. Hopefully. Potentially, Hopefully. yeah. It takes a couple of years. It but takes, <coughs> yeah, it takes, it takes like seven to nine months. but. Um, if they don't make it through their program, they adopt them out, and they have a waiting list of people that are they, that pay about three hundred fifty dollars to adopt dogs that have even gone through part of their program, um, which is really nice. And Carol's not here anymore. Carol, one of our volunteers, Carol Hakus, she went down there and started volunteering down there also, and um, she says it's very nice. And we, we have a, and we have another volunteer also who works there. Yeah, who works. We have a couple connections with Freedom Shelter Dogs. We have basically, you know, the our kennels, the kennels down there are like four times bigger for each dog. Uh, Carol was saying. The total animals fostered is this transferred out to foster care or that we're just in foster care for the month? For out? Yeah. On the animals out, because it just seems like we had uh, we had more than three animals in foster care. Well, it's in the animals out in April, so it must have been just the ones that went to foster care. The, went, the ones that went to foster care, so it doesn't include the status of ones that were already in foster care. Right, because this okay. report doesn't have any okay. data gotcha. of who was in house, right? I think that was what we determined. Animals first, yeah. yeah. Because obviously we didn't have the four of the animals. Hmm? I, I caught up in that. <laughs> All right, does anyone have any questions for Karen? <coughs> All right, thank you, Karen. Uh, next, we have the operations committee report, Dave. Um, not anything new to report. Um, except for Heidi. I'd like to touch on Heidi. Uh, this was a Rottweiler that came in um, that we amputated the toe on. Uh, she ended up having cancer uh, of the toe that unfortunately had spread to the lymph nodes in her. Um, prospects aren't good, but 
uh, incredibly, somebody adopted her yesterday. Uh, it's quite a story. Um, you want to tell them the, about this? Yeah, um, I'll share this with everyone else in the room. I, I emailed the board about the story, but um, a really, really special family um, were touched by this dog's story, and the way that they came to their attachment for this dog was that um, mom and dad are both in the military, and they have two uh, mature girls in their home. And when the dad had been deployed in Afghanistan, um, they had a nine-year-old resident Rottweiler who was part of their family who developed um, cancer. And the mom pursued, um, really vigorously pursued treatment of this dog. She went to specialists, um, cancer specialists, and had the dog go through chemotherapy to try to extend this dog's um, quality of life and his life until dad could get home to say goodbye to the dog. The dog ended up passing a couple weeks before the guy got home. And they're really fond of this breed. In the meantime, they adopted another dog, a young bloodhound. But they called, and they were interested in Heidi. And then when we told them um, you know, that we had a very poor prognosis on her, that we had diagnosed her with cancer, a very aggressive form of malignant melanoma, is that right? Um, they were just unfazed, completely unfazed by this. Karen and I were both really, really touched um, that they, they went home, deliberated as a family, came back and adopted this dog from us. And, um, they're in town locally here, and they said no matter how much time she has, if it's a week or a month, she'll have a couple fenced acres, and she'll have another dog and the rest of the family. So. Pretty special story. Um, I have agreed when it comes time to accommodate them as far as uh, euthanasia goes through the shelter. So, um, because the dog's been adopted, uh, I won't be asking the board for no one won't be doing the typical euthanasia. I'll be doing this as a favor to them as the owners. That's great. Just to let the board know. That's fantastic. Thank you. Spay and neuter continues to go well. We're running into kitten season and, and we're getting to the breaking point as far as what we can do uh, versus what needs to be done. So we may have to send some to Spain today, but um, so far I think we're doing a pretty good job at I, keeping up. Great job. I, I applaud you guys for yeah. uh, I mean, two days last weekend and what is there, 2016 or 22? Well, we're starting to get down the rhythm and, and so I, I think um, once, once that happens, and Mitch and, and Lisa and, and Autumn, uh, I, I would assume that they, they're experiencing the same thing. You know, we're, we're getting it down as far as the routine, and so we'll be able to do more. But, um, you know, when sitting kitten season comes, there's a lot of spays and neuters to, and puppy season, they coincide. So, um, you know, we've only done I think the report said 50, this report says 46, but around 50, uh, you know, this next month, I, I, I'm gonna be surprised if we don't double that just in this month, so. Um, anything else? No, just continuing to research the surgery table. Yeah. <laughs> um, dental equipment. Dental stuff, I've been looking around to see what kind of prices and what's available. So, um, and just, um, you know, as far as equipment goes, uh, we have four surgical packs, and last weekend, that was enough uh, to be workable, because as I'm doing the surgery, Kathy's repacking the packs and re-sterilizing them, and the length of time it takes to do that is matching up pretty good with the length of time it takes to do the surgery. So I don't foresee needing oh, maybe one or two more surgical packs. Uh, so. I think we're pretty well set on equipment, except for the surgery table and the dental equipment. So, and a monitor. Yeah. The monitor <laughs> continues to give us fits, but we're working on it. Did you get the chair? Did you guys have asked for it? I haven't gotten it yet, but I found one. Okay. okay. Work. Just so you can get it. How much distilled water do you use at the So for well, per load, load, it could be... Yeah, so like in one day, how much do you use? I don't know, probably a gallon to two, depending on how many packs you want. 
Yeah, I don't think much more than a gallon, in my guess. Or it, it takes about a quarter of a gallon to run one load. Except last weekend, I used almost one of those whole containers that they brought up that they used. Did you? Yeah. So more than I thought. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. well, we've had quite a bit donated. So. Oh, awesome. Okay, okay, we'll we'll keep it on the list. It'll just be something we always ask for. Perfect. Okay. What is it? Distilled, Distilled water. water for oh, water. Okay. Um, Yeah, I keep, I keep wanting to have an operations committee meeting, but it's hard to get it scheduled. But those on the operations committee should expect, I know, soon that we're going to have an We're still the operations going on that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> All right, um, is there any other questions for Dave or the operations team? All right, thank you. Um, IT committee report, that would be me. Um, I'll just throw out thanks to Ken and Brian for getting the programmable thermostats installed that we get them all installed now. Yep. So, um, Thank you, Ken. That'll yeah, save us quite a bit in the winter time, next winter for sure, um, with managing the heat for us a little bit better. Um, we're going to start now that the membership meeting is over. Um, our priority is going to be new computers for the shelter. So we'll get cranking on that in the next couple of days. Ken's already done a bunch of research. And, um, so just be gremlin on the computer. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> Today it was crazy. I had to call the shelter and say, is there a cat laying on the keyboard? I had to yesterday, too. Unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> and, and there was making a noise before you called it. Like, <laughs> it sounds like somebody's hitting the space bar, and there was no one there. So. <laughs> So we'll, uh, my goal will be to, uh, by next month, have some figures so, so that um, we can request funding for starting to replace the computers. And I'll get together with Ken and Cheryl, and we'll come up with a plan on how to do all that. Hey, Matt. Um, all right, um, any questions for the IT? Are the bumpers, um, do we have a date on when or uh, is that coming up in priority for the buffers? For the thermostats? Yeah. yeah, I asked Bernard about that the other day and he said it was on his list for this week. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I know it's, besides breaking, it also could be a fire hazard, <coughs> I think, if it's, you know, broken. So, good. We'll nudge him. Um, all right, any other questions for IT? All right, um, fund me, fundraising committee. Fundraising. Okay, now that we are done with this one, we're, I'm actually going to schedule a meeting if, if, within the next two weeks. So, you know, those of you and anybody else who wants to join us, um, we will be meeting together. I'll clean the house and we'll have it over at my house and just be thinking of some ideas. Rebecca was talking to me about a few things um, earlier um, before she left. So, um, we'll start thinking about what we need to do and we definitely need to start bring, you know, getting ready for the. Um, the big one in October, the silent auction. So um, start thinking about who we have as contacts. And I loved what you did last year. Um, I wanted to start earlier on trying to reach out to local businesses down the hill, Denver, whatever. So big push coming up on that. It was just this was keeping me especially very very busy. Um, and again, I think uh, I've got to pull the numbers together. I think it was right around fourteen hundred dollars for the total uh, cost of the prizes. The tickets were donated. Um, or paid for so we didn't have to worry about that. And I think with tonight's push, we sold quite a few, I was impressed. So I think we're going to be above $2,300 profit. So not too bad, no, but it was a lot of time. <laughs> thank you to, to those of you, especially you and Cheryl, who put so much time in to take care of that and Ken for all of his hard work and finding the prizes and, and testing them, right, Ken? <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to install the TV set? Did you talk to the winner on that? <laughs> they didn't ask. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's right. my only update. Can I have an addendum to the operations committee? Oh, yes. Um, we are. We did have Dr. Pam Scudder, who's been volunteering at the shelter, walking dogs and so on. We're, we're finally getting on top of putting her talents to their best use. She 
examining dogs, giving rabies shots, and so on. And Kathy and I uh, had her in the surgical suite on Sunday. So we're working on that as well. So awesome. Yeah, that was real important for me to mention that. So thank you. Actually, let's have Matt do the grant oh. committee. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so I don't steal his thunder. Okay. Yeah. Um, we received for April the $5,000 grant from the ZAO Family Trust Family Foundation, and which helped us mm -hmm. get taken care of. So it's great. And then we did get everything in for the grant that requests more information. Yes. Yes. So we'll go to your center for them soon. And that was from the five, oh, the second one was uh, for right? Lauren, 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 Lauren. meeting. We reviewed my time with the CPA and with paper, you know, all sorts of different supplies. Um, we're booking that in as non-monetary income and then expensing it out in the same month based on what the item was. When we determined that the new lease we signed for units two and three, where we have the surgery suite and the thrift store storage, actually expired on April 30th without a month to month provision. The landlord thought there was a month to month provision in there. Steve's working on getting that in writing. We have to have that in writing for the 990 um, on a continued, continued basis. Uh, prepare uh, just internal entries for uncollectible <clears throat> accounts receivable and de depreciation and whatnot. There were a couple of bad checks dating back, gosh, I think a couple of years that we went ahead and wrote off to bad debts. And posted the adjusting entry for the April non monetary donations and prepared, reviewed, and emailed the thrift store financials. 15th, completed the adoption income audit and all the incomes accounted for. 16th, paid the bills, processed payroll, and um, last month I had reported that we had gotten a notice uh, for a quarterly 941 that did not get um, a return, that did not get submitted last year. And so I went ahead and submitted that and got the notice back that they received it and they waived um, a penalty for that. So we will have no more penalties to worry about that I know of anyway. Um, going through the PNL. Our membership income is lower than projected. Um, that has been my first line under income for <laughs> the entire year, and I really just think that's because we were possibly a little overly ambitious with what we might get with our new membership program. However, the grants, sales, including the thrift store sales, and fundraising income was higher than expected. Donations, shelter program fees, and vet service income um, were lower than budgeted, but only slightly. Most investment income is reported quarterly, so you're not going to see much on there. That $2 is um, the uh, shelter capital fund savings account, just the interest on that. Supplies and materials were not put into the budget. That's that new non-monetary um, donation that we're tracking. Um, so you'll see when you look at the P&L, it's uh, $6,000 figure under its uh, account 4870, that's 64, 68, 22, that's all non-monetary. So, um, you know, we're talking about cash flow and whatnot, that really is not a part of the equation. So overall, we have almost $3,000 more income for the month than we expected. Um, expenses, the vet service program cost, and animal service um, continues to be under budget by over $1,000. This is the second month in a row. So. That was the money that we budgeted for what you guys were going to need to operate um, the unit upstairs. So it's just doing awesome. Um, fundraising expenses, including the thrift store, were 270 under budget. Uh, GNA newsletter, shelter and staff expenses were just slightly under budget. Payroll, $300 under budget. Congratulations, you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Um, shelter expenses are on target. And again, that 64, 68, 22 is expensed on that line as well. So you're going to kind of see inflated numbers there. Um, so overall, we're 1385 under budget for the month. And this is the best first four months that we've ever had, according to what I have dating back to, I think, 02 or 03 in QuickBooks. Um, we have a 2770-44 profit right now. And we've budgeted for a 47.95-33 loss. 
for the year, we've budgeted for just a small profit, um, but if we're able to keep on this, we could almost triple the profit that we budgeted for the year if we stay on track with the higher income and lower expenses. So, and uh, you know, I just can't say it enough. It's thanks to you two. You guys do it. Um, just. One thing I want to throw out is the, the 6000 and change, whatever, that was uh -huh. in the non-monetary donations. That's uh, going to be an unusual amount. Oh, yeah, that's about amount. Because about 5000 is the one-time dog food donation that we got from the... It was about 5700 in yeah. value. So, <coughs> just keep that in mind. Yeah, so it'll, I imagine, be closer to six to $800 a month that we'll see on there. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do also is um, estimate January, February, and March based on kind of an average over the next several months. So I want to see what it looks like over several months before I estimate. Um, so I think we get pretty similar donations on a regular basis. Yeah, I went and picked up the Southern Healthy Pet Supply the other day. Okay. And that filled up the trunk of my car in my back seat. I get a lot of stuff there. Uh, little things. Mostly dog food, little bags of little buffalo or whatever it is they sell. How often do you pick it up? I'm just curious, you know, for that volume. Every <coughs> calls me and says the bins over for either like monthly or maybe every quarter. Every couple months. Oh. Um, the last but, time I picked it up was right around, I would say quarterly because I picked it up in December. It was right around the time of um, December, January because she did a, a food drive in conjunction with the parade. Oh, okay. So she did that food drive from December 3rd to right after the first of the year, so.